Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a mystery horror film, Population 436. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One day, a pregnant woman is seen experiencing labor pains. During that time, a man is also seen being chased by the police, and he seems to have read something horrible in his red letter. The police pull over and then try to reason with him. That his car crashes near the town sign. Weirdly enough, his car crash is perfectly timed with the mother's childbirth. After the birth, we see the doctor stop the clock as he adjusts the number to 4.36 p.m. We also see the town sign's population count remains at 436. However, it does not change as the car driver dies because a newborn child just balances it out. After the car accident, his family mourns the man's death. His daughter takes her father's death seriously, and she is freaking out. She states that something was wrong with her father's death. She seems to know a secret about the town. However, before she could reveal it, the priest and the townspeople stop her outburst. Soon after the funeral, we see a man named Steve heading over to Rockwell Falls. He is on a mission from the Census Bureau to investigate why the Rockwell Falls population remains the same at 436. He arrives at a gas station and spots a couple of farmers. He asks them for directions, and the farmers just ignore him. Fortunately, Steve manages to find his way over to Rockwell Falls. Just then, he spots a woman riding a horse. She falls as the horse rears and catches Steve's full attention. He gets distracted and does not notice the tire popple near the town sign. This leads to his car tire going flat. He gets out of the car to check on the woman. She tells him that she is fine and tells him to just mine his flat tire. She also tells him that he should just backtrack to the previous town for a tow truck instead of proceeding to Rockwell Falls. He doesn't understand why she wants him to go back, nor did he know that she is giving him a warning. After a while, Steve sees a sheriff's car come from Rockwell Falls. He waves at the car to ask for assistance. As he meets the sheriff's deputy, he asks if he could help him get a tow truck into Rockwell Falls. At first, the deputy tries to avoid the question and then tries to make Steve feel unwelcome. However, after hearing he is from the Census Bureau, he informs the head sheriff of the situation. The head sheriff acknowledges this report and prepares for Steve's visit with the mayor. Then the deputy brings Steve into town while his car waits for the tow truck. When Steve arrives in town, he is met with many suspicious gazes. This makes him think that he is unwelcome here. As they arrive at the mayor's house, he meets with the rest of the sheriff's department and the mayor. Shortly after, he informs the mayor of the purpose of his visit. The mayor gladly accepts his visit and arranges his stay. Steve asks if he could meet with the census department of this town to get a full report on the population changes in the town. After that, the mayor orders one sheriff to take him to the census department tomorrow. Suddenly, a child arrives and informs the mayor that one of the townspeople has become ill. The mayor seems anxious at the news, so he requests Steve if he could allow a slight detour to his trip. Steve agrees, and they head to the place of the sick woman. As they arrive in a barn, it seems that the barn owner shows signs of resentment towards Steve, and Steve is confused. Shortly after, the doctor says that the woman is dying. The doctor also states that this is no coincidence, and it happened the moment Steve entered the town. This indicates that the town has a belief in a curse that maintains their population at 436. After they visit the sick woman, the mayor bids farewell to Steve as Steve goes to his lodgings. He also tells Steve to mind his manners regarding the town traditions. As he arrives at his lodgings, he meets a beautiful cowgirl, nicknamed Beauty Cow, who is the daughter of the landlady. Meanwhile, in a town conference, people are seen putting their paper in a box. Before they can reveal the purpose of the box, the mayor discusses Steve's visit here in town. He tells the townspeople to make him feel at home, while they find a means to keep him here permanently. This indicates that Steve will become a resident of their town, whether he likes it or not. After their discussion, the box is revealed to have a list of names to be picked as the next town festival's host. An old lady is chosen to be the festival host, and she gets handed a red letter, similar to the same received by the man who died in a car crash. After that, the townspeople begin their ominous prayer. Back at Steve's lodging, we see him spending the night with the lodging's residents. He talks about his career with the Census Bureau. The other residents think that he is smart and ask if he is single. He replies that he's recently single because he lost his family, so the other residents felt bad for him. Out of nowhere, the landlady states that Steve will soon be with his family. This creeps Steve and his hormones out, but he dismisses it as goodwill. This also unsettles Beauty Cow and makes her stop the conversation. After their dinner, Steve begins his first night at Rockwell Falls. Suddenly, he gets eerie dreams of a cross in a car. He goes to the kitchen to find food, to ease his shock from the dreams. There, he meets with Beauty Cow, and they begin flirting. After their late-night talks, Steve heads back to prepare for his tour in the town. The following day, he walks around town and sees the rustic beauty of it. 
He sees that the townspeople seem prosperous, and he takes note of this for his report. After a while, he rests at a cafe managed by the landlady. He notices that the people are rejoicing with the old lady who is selected as the town festival's host. Beauty Cow explains that it is a sacred festival that selects a host of honor. After that, he changes the topic and tells her about the life outside of their town. The townspeople overhear this, and the landlady calls Beauty Cow to avoid Steve. It seems that the townspeople don't like talking about outside of their town, so Steve stops talking about it. As he finishes his meal, he heads over to the census department of the town. There he meets with the female staff responsible for the census. Shortly after, Steve begins his survey on the census, regarding why the population didn't have any changes on the list. However, the staff, who is pregnant right at the time, strangely replies that this is normal and everything tends to stay the same for all those years. The staff's reply unsettles Steve, so he decides to dig deeper into the mystery of population 436. After snooping around, he realizes that the population count didn't even change for over a century. This concerns him, so he starts asking the pregnant staff about the others that he noticed who went missing on the census list. However, the staff replies that he should ask the mayor about that. The following moment, Steve heads to the festival venue and asks the mayor about the missing people. Unfortunately, the mayor insists that if he wants to find the people on the list, he should do it after the Grand Town Feast. Since he couldn't find any solid answers, he snoops around the town, hoping to find any leads. However, Steve doesn't find an answer and decides to end the day. Just then, a man is seen looking at him from afar as he and the deputy go out for drinks. While they drink, the man with his dying wife suddenly enters the bar with a gun in hand. The deputy tries to calm him down. However, the man resents Steve because he is the reason why his wife is gonna die. He thinks Steve has come to replace her. Just then, the deputy manages to calm him down and make him leave while getting his gun. Steve asks about the angry man, and the deputy replies that the man is just not thinking straight because his wife is dying. The deputy assures him that his wife will be fine after the grand feast, as the festival host will save her this time. However, this confuses Steve more and makes him question the strange occurrence in town. That same night, we see a young girl having an eerie dream similar to Steve. She sees visions of a doll in a car. It mentions a fever that is considered unholy in the town, and they don't know the reason why the fever is unholy. The following day, Steve continues traveling around town and sees many weird things about the townspeople. He sees the children acting robotic like the marionette, and the townspeople strangely overjoyed all the time. His investigation is interrupted when the deputy takes him by surprise. The deputy reminds him of his visit to the doctors to check the census on death rates. When he arrives at the clinic, he sees the patients seemingly become robotic as if their brains were tampered with. This strange occurrence makes him interrogate the doctor. However, he asks about the death census instead. The doctor replies that the death rate is pretty normal, and it's only a coincidence that it kept the same population at 436. This makes Steve further doubt the town and its people, but he hides his doubt to sneakily learn the truth of this population mystery. The doctor notices his curiosity about the treated patient, so he explains it to Steve. The doctor explains that it is the cause of a disease called fever, which causes them to have visions that make them want to run away from their town. Therefore, that is why the doctor tampers their brain to make sure they avoid hurting themselves while running outside of the town. After their conversation, Steve hears a girl screaming from the clinic. She is the daughter of the man who died in a car accident, and she is being treated for schizophrenia. After Steve's short meeting with the girl, he continues his research about the town. He learns that the town's population has remained at exactly 436 for a long time. People who try to leave Rockwell Falls seem to meet with tragedies or just vanish from town, which the town believes is God's work. Steve thinks the final piece of the mystery is answered in the Grand Feast, so he waits for the Grand Feast to commence. Just then, we see the old lady, who has been chosen as the festival's host, appear before the people with a rope around her neck. But she seems pretty happy for that moment and appreciates that great opportunity given to her. However, she soon dies willingly in the feast, while everybody applauds for her sacrifice. This shocks Steve as he now realizes that this is the exact sacrificial ritual that kept the town's population at 436 and that the town is fanatical at putting divine importance on the same population number. So Steve tries to escape the maniac people and inform the neighboring town's authorities, but he soon gets sedated by the doctor. Afterward, he wakes up only to find him surrounded by the group who explains to him that they want him to stay in the town to keep the population number at 436. Because of Steve's arrival, the old lady is chosen as the extra to be sacrificed, while the man's dying wife shown previously is spared. It's revealed that around 100 years ago, when the town's population at 436, a stranger migrated to this prosperous town, but along with him were all his evil acts. 
It's believed the gods were unhappy to see that, and so burned the stranger and his evils in a big fire, which however, destroyed the prosperous town. After that, people rebuilt the town and managed to control the population by purging extra ones with a selecting system, hoping to revive the town's prosperity. Knowing the whole truth, Steve desperately begs to leave, but they just tell him no strangers could leave the town alive once stepping in. Later, they even fake a resignation letter sent to Steve's workplace, claiming that he will not go back and will spend his rest of life with his lover in the town. Fortunately, before Steve is turned into the next marionette, he manages to escape and tries to bring Bumi Cow and the little girl from the clinic, as they both express desires to leave town. Just then, he meets a townsman, who was stalking him from afar. He was sympathetic, as he was in the same situation as Steve before, but couldn't dare to escape. Instead, the townsman helps plan Steve's escape, by setting fire in town as a diversion. During this diversion, Steve rescues the little girl in the clinic, and right after, he quickly heads to Beauty Cow. However, when he arrives to bring Beauty Cow, he sees her in the same condition as the robotic patients. The landlady must have informed the doctor about Beauty Cow's desire to leave town, which leads her to be so treated. Upon closer inspection, her skull was open and tampered with, and it made her unable to move properly. Being forced to leave her, Steve and the girl escape, using the tow truck that brought Steve's car. Before they could escape the town's border, the captain and the deputy chase and manage to surround them. The captain suggests that they'd better kill Steve, because the town will soon welcome a newborn child from the pregnant staff. However, since the deputy values his friendship with Steve, he lets him pass while killing the captain instead. As Steve and the little girl escape the town's border, the sky turns dark and thunder booms. The two realize that the cross and doll in the tow truck were the same in their dreams. And in that dream, a bright light appears. Suddenly, the bright light in the dream is revealed to be a truck, and they crash into it, immediately killing both of them. After a while, Steve's colleague comes to check his situation. As he nears Rockwell Falls, he gets caught in the same popple Steve's car went in, resulting in the colleague's car tire being flat. Shortly after, a sheriff arrives and helps him with his car. The sheriff offers to tow it into the town, and he invites the colleague to the town's celebration of the newborn twins. The colleague accepts his invitation, and the sheriff eagerly brings him into town to be one of the new residents. Ironically, even after the recent death of the captain, Steve, and the little girl, but with the newborn twins and Steve's colleague, the mysterious town is sure to get back the same population of 436 again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.